Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, why Roblox's dress to impress is taking the world by storm. Now, let's get into it. If you're new here, make sure to hit follow. The first views of the first ever commercial spacewalk. The first ever commercial spacewalk has taken place. I have a feeling the crowd is about to go wild. It was broadcast live to millions around the world through cameras on the SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, as well as ones fitted to the helmets of the actual astronauts. Billionaire Jared Isaacman, who has funded the mission, was the first private astronaut to carry out the spacewalk, followed by crew member Sarah Gillis shortly after. Here's a clip from the historic moment. Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. One, the single-handed mobility. Really cool to see one of our own out there. That's awesome. It's part of SpaceX's five-day Polaris Dawn mission, which blasted off on Tuesday, the 10th of September. Next. Are you a fan of Dress to Impress? It's the viral Roblox game, which is all over TikTok. It's loved by Gen Z and celebs can't get enough of it. Dress to Impress is a mini game uh, in Roblox, which is a much bigger gaming platform with lots of other games on it. A mini game where it uses basically dress up their little avatars into outfits based on a theme and then other users vote on who they think has the best outfits. That's our social media editor, Sophie Butcher. She's been telling Tech and Science Daily why this relatively simple game has taken the world by storm. It's very sort of like millennial coded in a way is in terms of it's very like Y2K, like throwback is very reminiscent of, of the lot of the games that, you know, people sort of my age and maybe slightly older would have played when they were like younger. At the same time, obviously, like Y2K is such a massive, massive trend. Over the summer, the Roblox game blew up on social media and is now one of the most popular games on the platform, with reportedly over 2.4 billion visits and counting. Users are given a randomised theme to base an outfit on, and have five minutes to walk around a dressing room full of customisable clothes, accessories, makeup and hair options. The avatars then walk down a runway and other users rank each other from one to five stars. The user with the most stars wins. So lots of celebs, both like IRL celebs, and like YouTubers have really jumped on it. Tara Yummy has made videos of her playing it. Even Charlie XCX has launched a collab with Gesture Impress. So you can use like brat templates in the game, uh, which again sort of plays into this whole like sort of Y2K like aesthetic that Gesture Impress is really pushing. And Sophie says part of its success may be down to its appeal to girls. I mean, I think gaming stereotypically is like more male coded than female coded but there is definitely an appetite amongst g- girls for like games like this as i'm saying and uh, similar to you know games that other like earlier generations would have played when they were kids for instance yeah it's it's very sims coded um also really reminds me of some of the like nintendo DS games that i would have played when i was younger the sort of more like fashiony ones so yeah I, th- I think there's kind of always been an appetite for like more female coded games but There's obviously no reason why, like, boys also can't play, just to impress. Now, there's a new mixed reality exhibition coming to London's Natural History Museum, which allows visitors to tour our planet 100 years from now. With mixed reality, what what you'll see is you'll still be aware of your physical environment and the animations will be overlaid on on top of that and you'll be guided through the exhibition through uh, by Hope, who's our, our sort of virtual guide. And through this exhibition we'll we'll basically take you a hundred years into the future to give a vision of of what um of what the natural world might look like in that time and we take you to eight different ecosystems so you'll travel through time and through space as part of this experience so it it very much kind of represents a, a bit of a new frontier for the museum in terms of our public offer That's Kevin Wright from the Natural History Museum, who's leading on the implantation of the new Visions of Nature project. It's the first exhibition of its kind for the museum, and it will be powered by Microsoft's mixed reality headsets. So we'll take you to the year 2125, and we'll take you through eight different ecosystems that show a possible future for our planet. So you journey from the Scottish Highlands to the African savanna to the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. And in each of those ecosystems, we'll tell us a story about how actions that we've taken now and positive changes that we've been able to implement 
in the current time have had a really beneficial impact for, uh, for the natural world in the future. As an example, visitors will witness a lifelike Darwin's frog leap from their hand into a futuristic urban park in Chile. Today, the frog faces extinction due to habitat loss. However, as captive breeding programs become more commonplace, we have reason to hope that these species may thrive in urban spaces in 2125. In each of those scenarios, then you'll get to engage with different elements of the natural world, you'll see creatures kind of come to life before your eyes. We really want people to leave with a message of hope from this exhibition and, and a feeling that they can feel empowered to do things now that can help to create some of those positive outcomes in the future. Kevin says it's been a real team effort to get this project together, collaborating with experts from different areas in tech as well as science. We work with a company called Sauler Studios, so they are specialists in designing these kind of immersive uh, exhibitions for museums. And we've worked with Microsoft as well, who are sponsoring the experience and have, have supported us with the technology that we use. And then we've also worked with NHM scientists as well, who've been able to inform us about what those imagined scenarios for the future might look like. Visions of Nature will open to the public on the 24th of October. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, how you can secure a ticket to Antarctica. Welcome back. The government has announced that data centres in the UK are to be classified as critical national infrastructure. Joining areas such as emergency services, finance, healthcare systems, as well as energy and water supplies that already have such status. By being categorised in this way, it means data centres will receive greater government support to anticipate and recover from major incidents, such as cyber attacks, outages or environmental disasters. The hope is that the move, which is the first new CNI designation in almost a decade, will not only help protect critical data infrastructure, but also provide businesses with reassurance to help boost economic growth in an increasingly digital world. And finally, fancy going to Antarctica? Well, here's how your name could go on a journey to the frozen wilderness. A new project from the British Antarctic Survey is inviting you to add your name to a time capsule that will travel thousands of miles on the research ship Sir David Attenborough. Yes, the former Boaty McBoatface vessel. To the UK's Prothera research station in Antarctica. Here's the actual Sir David Attenborough explaining the project. Welcome to the Royal Research Ship Sir David Attenborough. Ticket to Antarctica will take your name on a remarkable journey to the frozen continent. Antarctica is one of the most extraordinary places I've ever been to. Now you can discover what it's like and why it matters to us all. As well as receiving a souvenir digital ticket featuring their campaign character Pebble Penguin, there will be weekly updates from the voyage. To find out more details, visit ticketsantarctica.co.uk. You're up to date. Come back at 4 pm for the Standard Podcast for all the latest news and analysis. Tech and Science Daily will be back tomorrow at 1 pm. See you then.